All right, good to see you in church tonight. Take a songbook. Let's start by singing together, shall we? Number 490, we praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love. Revive us again, number 490. And once you have it, let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us tonight. 490, revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the son of for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. On that third, all glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who was born all our sins. Good singing and uh, good to see you in church tonight. And uh, you might have heard on the news that um, the House and Senate have passed the heartbeat bill here in Ohio. And um, that will reduce greatly the number of abortions. And uh, in other words, you're not allowed to have an abortion once a heartbeat is detected. And uh, that's a good thing. Amen. And uh, we're excited about that. And uh, we have to... Uh, you, you, did you get a piece of paper? Anybody not get one of these little papers? Has the governor's phone number on it? Anybody need one? Brother Taylor has one if you need it. And uh, we just want you to call, and all you do is you call, and you just tell them that uh, you want them to sign that bill. Uh, do not veto it, okay? And uh, we want him to push that on through. And uh, so th that's what that's for, and uh, we just want our voice to be heard. So often... There's, you know, they, they, they call it the silent majority. Well, we, we shouldn't be silent, amen? And uh, let your voice be made known. That's, uh, that's our privilege, and we should let that be known to him that that's what we want done, amen? Uh, that's good, good, good things, all right? Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for another Wednesday evening that you brought us to and another opportunity for us to gather together. And, Lord, we pray you'll do just what we sang tonight. Revive us again. Lord, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. That's what we need tonight, God. And I pray you'd, you'd provide that. You're the only one who can. And so help us, Lord, as we bow before you here at the beginning of the service to set aside all the cares of today and the concerns about tomorrow. Uh, and Lord, help us to focus for this next hour or so we're together just on what you would want to say to each of us. And may you accomplish what you desire in each one of our lives. Control the service. Make it exactly what you would desire it to be and what you know we need it to be. And we'll thank you for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Well, let's go over to 140. 140, the first Noel. 140. Let's sing that first together. The first Noel. Then entered in the wise men three, all reverently upon their knee, and offered there in his presence their gold and burr and frankincense. No. Uh, no, uh, no, uh. 
Good evening. Good evening. This evening's missionary message is from Bill and Susan Kiefer, missionaries to Brazil. Dear friends, it is interesting how songs in the past still hold a great place in our lives. This morning, the song, It Is No Secret, by Stuart Hamblin, written in 1950, came to mind as the time for this Christmas email letter was due to be written. We do want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, as well as thank you for your prayers and support for the missionary here in Brazil. And the year of 2016 must go down as the year of seeing what God can do. It started out with a severe infection in Bill's leg that took almost a year to heal. It was God's way of getting Bill out of the way to do his work in January, the teen retreat at the Hope Ranch. That work continues as the young people that led the retreat are back again to serve the Lord at the teen retreat to be held in January. On May 1, 2016, Hope Baptist Church started meeting in the home of one of its members. We are now in a rented facility. It is exciting to see how God works in lives of those involved in his new work. Just last week, our new caretaker at Hope Ranch and his wife put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ at Hope Baptist Church. Amen. During 216, some improvements have been made at the Hope Ranch. A new caretaker's house has been built to provide the needed space for the camp office that will be in the existing house. Another improvement is the construction of an outdoor meeting area. We're still looking to the Lord to provide funds needed to build the activity center. Excitement is growing as people look forward to the upcoming camps at Hope Ranch. Please pay for the re pray for the retreats to be held in 2017. January 2nd through the 7th is the counselor retreat, followed by the teen retreat, January 9th through 14th. The family retreat is held February 25th through the 28th. This is the biggest retreat of the year. Please pray that God will provide the help needed to also make it the best retreat of the year. Then comes the couples retreat, April 21st through the 23rd. Every year we hear testimonies of how God has transformed lives through the ministry of Hope Ranch. Please pray for protection, provision, and the Spirit of God to move on the hearts and souls of the participants. It truly is no secret what God can do in Christ, Bill, and Susan Kiefer. Long time missionaries in Brazil doing a great job down there, and we praise the Lord for that. Uh, get your prayer guide out if you would, and uh, we'll look at the coming events tomorrow night. The Are You Inside down at the CRC prison. Uh, Friday night, Reformers Unanimous right here at 7 o'clock at the church. And then, of course, Saturday morning, they're out at London at 8.30. We'll have our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 o'clock as usual. Sunday at 5.45, the children will be having their Christmas play, and uh, so we invite you to be there for that. That's always a great time. On the 17th, which is a Saturday, we'll go caroling uh, from 10 to noon. Uh, you sign up for that, if you would, so we know uh, how many we're going to be expecting on that Saturday. That's always a, a wonderful time. We go out and carol and go to some nursing homes and such, and then we come back and... Uh, have some cookies and hot chocolate and such, and it looks like the weather's going to turn. Where well, that's going to sound pretty good, all right? And so we'll uh, look forward to a great time together there on the 17th. And then, of course, the 18th, the Hope of Christmas, the adult choir cantata at 6 o'clock on Sunday night, the 18th, okay? Um, on the inside of your schedule, we praise the Lord. There were 11 at RU Inside last Thursday night after having been off for about three weeks. So that was, uh, we were pleased with that. Six brand new fellows and five were saved. And uh, it was a good night. We praise the Lord for that. They did not have one at London on Saturday. They had something else going on, and so they uh, postponed that. They will be there this Saturday. Um, continue to pray for the church ministries and requests. And then underneath the health list, uh, if you would add... Uh, Leanne Schnapp. Leanne has uh, hurt her back uh, oh, a week or so ago with a, uh, again, she had hurt it once and then it was healing up and then she had another fall. So uh, pray for her. She's out tonight. And then uh, just pray for the Alton family, A-L-T-O-N, Alton family. Their daughter uh, is expecting and the latest ultrasound that they did, the doctor said they could not detect any brain activity. Uh, during the ultrasound so please pray for this family all right and I know they would appreciate that okay 
Um, also, pray for uh, uh, Kate and Josiah. They're, uh, Kate is due, and uh, they are, I think, in labor uh, tonight, so uh, be praying for them and keep them in prayer. And another a child for them and uh, grand, another grandbaby for the Taylors, all right? Okay, and uh, let's see. Continue to pray for these in authority with our government. Continue to pray for the military, uh, these battling cancer. Keep, keep them in your prayers and, of course, our salvation list. And then we do pray for the unreached people groups of the world, for God to raise up laborers to send to these folks and get them the gospel. And then the uh, missionaries, of course, around the world, and especially the Kiefers uh, with their letter from uh, Brazil. Also, I want to make note, there's a sign-up sheet down there for the Grove City School of the Bible. I believe they resume in January, uh, right around January 24th or so. And, and these, are, these are the courses now that are going to be offered uh, in the spring, all right? Uh, the Christian Home, all right? Man, that's, that's a, uh, that'd be worth it right there. Uh, just to come understand what it is uh, to establish and to have and what makes up a Christian home, okay? Uh, another lesson they're having is, is a survey of the New Testament. Get, a, get an idea of what every book is about and the theme of the book and uh, the, 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 um, sometimes a basic outline of the book, but it really helps you have a grasp of the entire New Testament. And so that's another course. And then another one is teaching the Bible. Would you like to understand how to teach the Word of God? That's another course being offered. Boy, I like all three of them. I think I'll sign up. And uh, this, is, uh, this is really good. Looking forward to that. So uh, get your name on the list down there. I think it's $25 is all it is for a course. Uh, if you take all three, it's just $60. You get the, the, the bundle discount there, okay? So uh, you can do that. But I hope many of you take advantage of that. That's a great, great, opp great opportunity for you uh, on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock, okay? So that sign-up sheet's down there. Don't, uh, don't miss out on that, okay? And uh, Brother Paul Abel, why don't you make your way up here? Brother Taylor, you have something else? Oh, we have some visitors? Okay, Brother Paul Abel, you make your way up here. Who we got visiting tonight? Anybody here tonight? Right here. Yes, sir. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Great. Okay. Good chat. Good to have you tonight. Thanks for coming in. Good. Great. Glad to have you on a Wednesday night. All right. Anybody else here tonight for the first time? All good? All right. Chad, just take a moment and you fill that out. And a little bit when we have your offering, just drop that card in the plate if you would. And keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. Glad you're here, my friend. That's great. Let's give him a warm welcome, all right? All right. Brother John, I'm going to Brother John come. He'll lead us in our prayer this evening and uh, unite, unite with him in prayer. Pray silently along with him as he leads us audibly tonight. Brother Paul Abel. Uh, let's pray. Our right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for the way you've watched over us and protected us. We ask that you'd be with the pastor as he brings the message tonight, that it'd be what each one of us needs tonight. And we do want to pray for the bill that uh, is uh, in front of the Senate. And we'd just like for them to pass that without any veto and that we'll be able to get this settled about children being born dead and murdering them. So we just pray that you'd help us with that. And then we do pray that you'd be with the, those that we have on our um, uh, health list for health purposes. And we, I don't know what all of them are, but you know what exactly what needs to be done as far as cancer and transplants and um, operations and surgery and we just pray that your perfect will be done in each one of those lives and then we ask that you'd be with the those that are in authority we pray that you'd help them search their hearts and uh, and help us to, to, to turn this nation back from what it used to be a christian nation and, and we thank you for the way that you've uh, brought us this far and we pray that you continue to deal with our hearts and their hearts and uh we ask that you would be with our missionaries that we have that are around the world in foreign countries and then here in the United States. We just pray that you'd give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need as they stand before the people that they are serving and, and preaching the gospel. And we pray that we see souls saved and uh, people that would, right here in Ohio, that would uh, ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart and forgive them their sins and save us from all unrighteousness. 
And the only way is Jesus that we can get saved. And we ask that you'd help us with this message that we can carry it out. And then we pray for our our ones that are on the, uh, the list that's of salvation. We just pray that someone would come by their house and that they'd listen to them and as they sit down and give them the gospel and that, that they get saved and be a, 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 a not only a salvation, but that they could be able to grow here at the church as they come and uh, w- join us church here. We ask that you'd be with the, the RU group. We thank you for the numbers we hear, the young men getting saved and and wanting to turn around their lives. And we pray that you'd build a hedge about them until they can get into a place where they could uh, join a church or come out of the, the prison and uh, serve you in whatever area you want them to. And we do pray that you'd be with the unreached group of uh, people that that they they don't even have a Bible that they can read and not even look at and not even a page of it. We just pray that you'd help them be able to get this taken care of with the situation of translating it into their language that, so that they could have a Bible that they could read and use it in their daily lives. And we thank you for the the Bible that you've given us that we have and carry in our hands. And, our, and we ask that you'd help us now throughout this evening. And we ask that you'd be with the mission, uh, mission uh, uh, that was read tonight, that you'd help them continue the, to go, the ones in Brazil and, uh, and other ones that are over there. We pray it should help them now throughout this day, and we pray for the offering you, that we have to give them, and we pray it should help us as we give that back a portion that you've blessed us with that, uh, that's yours anyhow. So we pray it should help us now, and pray it should uh, bless throughout this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. 228, let's go to 228. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. Would you stand with me as you find number 228 together? Let's sing that first verse. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock Where rivers of pleasure I see He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock That shadows a dry thirsty land He hideth my life in the tap of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand a wonderful savior is jesus my lord he taketh my burden away he be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the taps of his love and cup. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
With numberless blessings each moment he crowns. With numberless blessings each moment he crowns. And filled with his bonus divine, I sing in my rapture of glory to God for such a redeemer as mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with a million on high. He hides my soul in the clouds. singing. You can be seated. Ushers will come. We'll get our offering tonight. And offering tonight again goes for the uh, mission uh, trip for Brother Yoder and uh, heading to India in February. And uh, we want to get him there. Amen. Amen. And so we're, we're getting close. I think we're right around a thousand dollars and uh, we want to uh, get there quickly so we can get the tickets. All right. So uh, give Give generously tonight to, to the trip, and all of it gets set aside just for flights uh, to get them there. I've, uh, I've had communication with the pastor there that he's going to be meeting with in India. They're very excited uh, about him coming and uh, being part there and training some of their pastors. Uh, it's it's going to be a great time. So uh, it'll be a great investment uh, for you as he goes to train pastors. All right, let's pray together, shall we? Father, I pray your blessing on our giving tonight. We thank you for Dr. Yoder and uh, Lord, for the ministry of 1040 International and to Brother Moreland. And Lord, this opportunity now, this open door that has come to India and to, to train pastors there for the ministry. And Lord, I pray that you'll provide the means for him to get there and take care of all the expenses, God. And I pray that you would bless the offering to that end tonight. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
good. Thank you, Lisa. Take your Bible tonight. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, if you would, please. Good to see John and Emily made it to church. Amen. And uh, It's probably about 3.30 in the morning, what they're used to, but uh, it's good to see you both and uh, getting you're still figuring out what day it is and what time it is and all that uh, good stuff. They got in last night, and uh, I'm sure they slept some, but they got a three-month-old that isn't quite sure where she is right now, and uh, probably seen more white people in the last few hours than she has her whole life, I admit, than where all the dark people at, but uh, it's a blessing to see you tonight, glad you're here, amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 6, and verse number 18, the Bible says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that wherein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here tonight. And, Lord, we, as we have gone through the armor of God, gone through uh, this spiritual warfare that we're involved in, I pray, Lord, that tonight you would help us to uh, understand the all-importance of prayer. Just as you summed it up here at the end and how how vital it is that we pray always. And so, Father, help us tonight to focus and help us to give you our undivided attention. That you could work that which you would desire in each one of our hearts. And may we grasp this important truth this evening and may it help us. May it challenge us. May it change us. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We come to the all-important part of prayer, what plays in our spiritual warfare. Now, prayer is not another piece of armor, okay? Prayer goes over all the armor, okay? Prayer is all-encompassing. It's an equal importance to all of the armor that you put on individually. Uh, Just by way of review, we talked about four keys to victory in spiritual warfare. And we said, first of all, the first key was realizing our relationship, our position in Christ. Our relationship, our position in Christ. Remember, be strong in the Lord. The whole key to this is we're in Christ. Okay? And, And in Christ, we can do all things. And then, number two, we said the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't minimize the being yielded to the Spirit of God in spiritual warfare. And then, we said number three, it's taking on the whole armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You don't pick and choose what pieces you like and what pieces you don't like, or what you enjoy wearing or what you don't enjoy wearing. You need the whole armor of God. And then and he emphasizes that over and over. And then, of course, number four is what we'll talk about tonight, and that is prayer. Prayer. No one is successful in spiritual warfare without prayer. Now, I want you to look uh, earlier in the book of Ephesians. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Now here is Paul, and, he, and, and this prayer is recorded for us uh, so we can understand a little bit about Paul's prayer for the church here at Ephesus, for the prayer for the Ephesians. Now notice in, in verse 15, he says, Where have I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love to all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now here's his prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints and what is exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in heavenly places." far above all principality and power and might and dominion 
and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. What a prayer. And, and he's praying. Notice, he's not asking God to reveal to them something they don't have. He's asking God to reveal to them what they already have in Christ. What they already possess in Christ. And most believers, it's not God giving us something that we don't have. It's making God make it known to me what I do have. Make it known to me what, 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 what is available to me being in Christ. And that's the prayer that Paul gives. And, and again, notice over in chapter 3, it, and again, a similar situation. Notice verse 14. Paul says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And here's his prayer. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. You ever prayed that for somebody? Probably should. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. What a prayer that was. See, the, the, the comp He's praying for comprehension. He's praying for enablement. That God enable them to do what they need to do. Empower them to do what they need to do. God, enlighten them. Show them how great you are. Show them what the, you, they have in Christ. And through prayer, we get the comprehension. Through prayer, we get the enablement to enjoy the riches we have in Jesus Christ. To understand the spiritual blessings. Remember in Ephesians 1, he says, you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. Well, what are they? What, are, what do you mean all spiritual blessings? How do I comprehend that? How do I even know what that's all about? I get that through prayer. God will reveal that. God desires me to know that. He desires you to know that. So let's look, number one, tonight in, in, in the, the preeminence of prayer. The preeminence of prayer. Back in verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 6. Notice it says, praying, what's the next word? Always. Praying always. It means we pray in all seasons. And that means we pray when we feel like it and we pray when we don't feel like it okay then we still pray the preeminence of prayer needs to be firmly fixed in our minds I, I read this week of A.T. Pearson A.T. Pearson was a preacher who preached in the late 1800s and just a little bit in the early 1900s A.T. Pearson wrote the biography of George Mueller he, was, he knew him and he wrote that book and he said this this is interesting A.T. Pearson said every new Pentecost has its preparatory period of supplement or of waiting for endowment. Sometimes the tarrying has been extended from 10 days to weeks to months or even years. But listen, never has there been an outpouring of, a, of the divine spirit from God without a previous outpouring of the human spirit to God. Did you hear what he said? He said there's never been an outpouring of God's spirit to man that wasn't first preceded by an outpouring of man's spirit to God. A great outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and the power of the Holy Spirit. But that was preceded by ten days of folks offering up their spirit to God. Saying, God, get, we're waiting for your power to come. And, and, and prayer became a priority. Prayer uh, is always the preparation for every new triumph. I guarantee you, you listen... Uh, years ago, I remember hearing Dr. John R. Rice say, all our failures are prayer failures. All of our failures are prayer failures. We, we, we fail to pray. And so prayer has to have a preeminence. It is impossible to overemphasize the importance of prayer in a believer's life. It is impossible to overemphasize the importance of prayer in spiritual warfare. 
impossible. And so it has to be preeminent. We have to have the preeminence of prayer. Praying always. And then, secondly, I want you to notice tonight, the passion of prayer. The passion of prayer. He says, we're praying with all prayer and supplication. All prayer and supplication. Have you ever noticed how many different kinds of prayer there are? There's silent prayer. There's audible prayers. There's public prayer. There's private prayer. There's prayer that ceases. You say amen. You're done. But then there's prayer without ceasing where you continue to pray, continue to talk to God. There's short prayers. There's longer prayers. There's, there's prayer with fasting. There's rejoicing prayer. There's broken prayers. There's thanksgiving prayers. There's asking prayers. There's resisting the enemy in prayer. There's doctrinal prayers. You can uh, pray through the Bible and pray different prayers of the Bible like we just read Paul's prayers. You see, there, there's all kinds of different prayers. But all the, all the different kinds of prayers are all part of our arsenal of prayer when it comes to warfare, when it comes to dealing with the enemy. You know, James 5, when it talks about Elijah, that he was a man subject to like passions like as we are. And yet, he prayed fervently, remember? He said he prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain by the space of three years and six months. And it says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, accomplishes much. Effectual, fervent prayer. Unless you think, oh, he was some special guy. No, he goes to, God made sure he told us He's a man subject to like passions like as we are. He is no different than you or me. And God made sure we, he, that we would know that. And so it's effectual, fervent prayer. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Would you look there with me for a moment? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul is saying here, notice verse number 3 with me. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Again, it's not talking about physical war. It's talking about spiritual war. It says we're not fighting the devil after the flesh. And then there's a parenthesis here. And the parenthesis in the Bible is always a personal note from the author to the reader. It's a personal note from God to us. And you know what he tells us? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What does the word carnal mean, church? Fleshly. They're not of the flesh, okay? They're not fleshly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then here's the weapons. The, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. The weapons we fight with are not just positive thinking, think positive, hey, keep looking up, hey, it'll be all right, hey, don't worry, be happy. You know, the, that, that's not the weapons that we fight with. Weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are spiritual. And the greatest spiritual weapon you have is prayer. And God says, listen, that will pull down strongholds. We talked last week about the, the Word of God and the power of the Word of God and, and how God said, remember, the church will be going and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. You know, that Satan takes certain areas of our life and you know what he does? He puts fence up around it and says, this is mine. You've got to stay out of here. But God says through prayer and through the Word of God, those are the weapons that are not carnal. They're not fleshly. God says we go and we take back that property. We take back those strongholds. We demolish the strongholds of Satan. You, have, you and I have divine power to resist Satan. We have divine power to defeat the enemy. And we lay hold of that power through prayer. I think of Joshua, the children of Israel when they went to Jericho. You think about crossing the Jordan River, going into the promised land, and the first, first city they have to go after is Jericho. Now listen, that was, that was an amazing task that they're looking at. I mean, a wall, not just a walled city, a walls and walls of city. 
I mean, walls large enough they could live on them, and, and, and houses were built on them. And I wondered as they looked, and they looked at this huge fortress that would be really impossible to penetrate. And I wondered if people would thought, if they're normal people, and I suppose they were, how in the world are we going to win this? How in the world are we going to take this city? Can't wait to hear what the battle plan is. Hmm? And you know what the battle plan was. Yeah, let's walk around it one time each day for six days, and then on the seventh day we'll walk seven times around it, and then we're going to yell real loud, the priests are going to blow their trumpets, and the walls are going to fall down flat. Really? Huh? I mean, can you imagine that there had to be some people that might have been a bit skeptical about that? Come on, we've got to use some kind of weapons. We've got to have something to defend ourselves. We've got to have something in our hands. We've got to have uh, swords, uh, uh, stones, uh, you know, something. Give us machine guns, grenades, or something. They had nothing. You understand? What? Listen, their weapons, two things, prayer and obedience to the Word of God. Joshua got that plan directly from God. And so now it's do I... I'd simply pray, and I trust God. And listen, it, it, put it down your level. When you're facing some impossible situation, when you're facing a difficult task, you start figuring out fleshly weapons and how you can attack it and how you can get it figured out and how you can beat that need or meet that need or take care of that problem. Or do you just say, I'm going to pray and be obedient to God? And people look at you sometimes who want to rely on fleshly weapons and they'll, they'll, they'll make fun of you or mock you. Oh, yeah, like that's going to do something. Hmm? Oh, yeah, like, that, like that's really going to get you somewhere. Yeah, it is. I wonder, I wonder how, how much the Israelites heard the insults from the people on the wall when they would walk around, not say a word, and then return. I, I'm sure they were laughed at. So I thought, what are these dumb Jews doing now? What, what, are they, what do they think they're doing? I tell you, it, 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 prayer and obedience to the Word of God, that's how it's supposed to be for us. And just as the walls fell down and crumbled when they obeyed God, the strongholds that Satan has put in your life will fall down and crumble as you rely on the weapons of your warfare, prayer and and obedience to God's word. God has promised it. He said they'll pull down the strongholds. So the question is this. Do you schedule a time to be alone with God? Do you schedule time to be alone with God? When you see anybody that's important okay how many think it's important to see a doctor hmm? okay you don't just call the doctor up or you don't just show up at his office and say hey I'm here to see the doctor how's that work huh no, it doesn't work does it in fact if you just show up they would ask you do you have an if he's important you make an appointment did you realize this man's important? He's got valuable time. I want to make an appointment. How, how valuable do you think it is to meet with God? But you won't make an appointment to Bina? You won't make it part of your schedule to say at this time I'm meeting with God? And don't let anything break that appointment. Make that a priority. It was said of Charles Haddon Spurgeon that he'd schedule time with God and it was said that not even a visit from the king of England could interrupt that time. Maybe there's a reason we're still, that his sermons are still published and read today. The Bible says in Mark 1 and verse number 35 that Jesus rose a great while before day and went out into a solitary place and there prayed. I would say if Jesus Christ had to get up early and go to a place and there pray, I would think you and I need to do it. 
much more. But he is certainly our example. So do you have a time and a place where you pray? A time and a place where you meet God? Prayer has to be a passion. has to be a passion in our life. So we have the preeminence of prayer. We have a passion of prayer. Number three is the paraclete of prayer. The paraclete of prayer. That's why Ephesians 6 again, if you notice in verse 18, it says we're praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. In the Spirit. That's the paraclete. That's the word for Holy Spirit. Now do not interpret praying in the Spirit to praying in tongues. That is not what is being referred to. In fact, it's interesting, is it not? Both prayers we read tonight from Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3 were certainly prayers in the Spirit, but they were not prayers uttered in any unknown tongue. Only, in only one book in the Bible is the unknown tongue dealt with and addressed, and that is Corinthians. The, the most immature carnal, fleshly church of the New Testament. All sorts of issues, all sorts of problems that Paul was having to correct in the church. Why would you lift something like that out and say, oh, I want that? You can look at, you can look at the uh, dealing with so much false teaching and false doctrine they had. You don't read of any instruction about tongues in Galatians. Our Ephesians, our Philippians, our Colossians, our First and Second Thessalonians. You don't read any instruction about tongues or praying in an unknown tongue. You don't read any instruction when Paul wrote Timothy, his preacher boy, our Titus, the men he's training for the ministry. No instruction at all. None. See? No mention of tongues or speaking in tongues. The truth is, and, and in reading... Uh, a book this week about a man who has dealt a lot with people who have battled demonic things. He made this statement, and I, and I wrote it down. I, he said, you ought to always, if, if someone has experienced, well, I, I pray in tongues. You need, to ask, you need to ask, what spirit is authoring this language? What spirit is the author of this language? 1 John 4, verses 1 through 4 says, We're to try the spirits, whether they be of God. And so you command that spirit to answer clearly, Has Jesus Christ come in the flesh? And demand that they answer clearly. Ask them, Is he the Son of God? And do you honor the blood of Jesus Christ? And insist that it on a clear and precise answer. I'll give you a clue. The Holy Spirit will always answer with a resounding yes. Any other spirit will be very evasive or simply give a blatant no. Don't be deceived by lying spirits. Praying in the Spirit means this. You're praying in harmony with the Holy Spirit. You're praying in harmony with the Holy Spirit. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, let me give you some ideas, all right? Number one, ask the Spirit to guide you when you pray. Romans 8 and verses 26 and 27, the Bible says that the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit of God dwells in us. And we often, our infirmity is we often don't know how to pray like we ought. 
Everybody, everybody, there, there's not a, when you read that list on Wednesday night, and there's a, especially the health list, well, how do I pray? Sometimes we're not sure how to pray. We're not quite sure what we should be asking for. That's where the Spirit of God has to come in and say, guide me in my prayers. Help me know what I should pray for. I want to know the mind of God. If I'm praying what I know God wants me to ask for, I'll receive the answer to my prayers. But I won't know what God wants me to ask for unless the Holy Spirit helps me. And so I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to guide me in prayer. Number two, I reject all fleshly praying. Reject all fleshly praying. James 4 and verse 3, James says, You have not because you ask not, and you, you ask and receive not because, he's saying, you're asking amiss. You're asking to consume it upon your lust. You're asking to consume it upon your desires. You just, oh, oh Lord, give me a million dollars. Really? Huh? Oh Lord, let me win the lottery. Really? I think there might be some flesh involved in that, don't you? Reject all fleshly praying. And then number C, you pray according to the Word of God. You know, it's awful difficult when you pray God's words back to Him. God is bound by His Word. God is a God of His Word. And you can pray His Word back to Him. And that's especially good to do when, when at times you pray and God feels distant from you. There are times you pray and you feel very close and very intimate with God, and there's other times you pray and it seems like that you're just, your words are bouncing around the room. Just, just be honest about it. And that's the time you want to go ahead and pray, uh, pray the Word of God. Find the prayers of Paul. Find some of the prayers of David in the Psalms. And pray those to God. Give those back to God. And many, many of those prayers can help shape our prayers. And it helps us. The, the paraclete of prayer, the Holy Spirit. Don't neglect Him. He's your prayer partner. Don't do it on your own. You don't have to. Okay? So, we have the preeminence of prayer, the passion of prayer, the paraclete of prayer. Number four is the protection of prayer. The protection of prayer. Again, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto. Watching. That's a military term. It's like a, a sentry on guard. And in spiritual warfare, you always better be on guard. You always better be on the lookout. You're always watching over yourself, over your family, over your church, over the work of God. What's the, what's the job of a, of a, a guard, a, a sentry? You know what it is in, in, in a, if, if your, uh, your, your army is here and, and you've got soldiers out there watching, you know what they're watching? They're watching so no one can bring a surprise attack upon you. They're going to sound the warning. And, and so you have to be on guard. You have to be looking so you don't get surprised by an attack. That's why the Bible says we walk in Ephesians earlier, in fact, chapter 5, about walking circumspectly. It means your head's kind of on a swivel. You know what I mean? And you're, 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 you're always aware of your surroundings. And always aware of what's going on. Paul said, we well, don't be ignorant of his devices. And the way you can be on watch, and the way you can be looking out for those attacks, listen, it has to be with prayer. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, Jesus said. Look at uh, uh, Luke 22. Would you turn there with me, please? Luke 22. We were just here Sunday morning in our Sunday school class. Luke 22 for our Bible chapter. And Luke 22. Notice with me verse number 31 where Jesus said to Simon, He says, The Lord said, Simon, Simon, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But here's the great thing. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You know what the Lord is saying? 
I'm watching out for you. And I'm doing it by prayer. I'm praying for you, Peter. I'm, I'm, I'm on guard for you. I'm protecting you with prayer. How do you, how do you protect somebody when you're not even close to them? How do you protect somebody when they're in Uganda? How do you protect somebody when they're in China or Armenia or halfway around the world? You know how you do it? You do it with prayer. You do it in prayer. The protection of prayer. I'll guarantee you there's times that, that missionaries have escaped danger and escaped problems or escaped accidents, and it's been because somebody was praying and asking God to protect them. And keep them safe. And so pray for protection. And, and, and when you pray for that and you pray for God's protection in your life, listen, some of you, we've all experienced things where, where you know, you, you, you see a horrible accident. You think, boy, if I'd have been here 30 seconds earlier, I'd have been involved in that. Or I'd have been a part of that. Or just different things take place. You think, wow, uh, that uh, sure was lucky. No, you weren't lucky. Huh? God's watching out. Protection. Protection. And so, uh, just, just in prayer, the protection of prayer. Don't underestimate that. The protection of prayer. And then, let's go to number five. The perseverance of prayer. This is important. They're all important. This one's important too. The perseverance of prayer. Notice he says, watching there unto with all perseverance perseverance another word we might be more familiar with is persistence and whether it's our union with Christ and our position in Christ or whether it's Holy Spirit's work in our life our putting on the whole armor of God each one takes persistent prayer anytime Jesus taught on prayer he taught on the persistence of prayer whether it was the man coming at midnight needing three loaves for the friend coming his journey and he wouldn't get up and give him because he's his friend, he got up and gave it to him because just like you, he couldn't sleep. Too much pounding, okay? Yeah, he said, all right, if I'm gonna, we're going to sleep at all. I better get up and give him some loaves. He said he didn't give it to him because he was his friend, because after that he wasn't his friend anymore. But he said he got up and gave it to him because of his importunity, his persistence. Same thing with the widow and the, and, and the, the unjust judge and the widow. Avenge me of my adversary, avenge me of my adversary. And I think, man, she was there all the time. Not no matter where he went, no matter what he did, she was there saying avenge me. And he said, man, she, weird, she wore me out. I'm tired of hearing from her. I'm going to do what she asks. Those were the times Jesus taught about prayer. Persistence. Persistence. Many times a day, you're going to find yourself praying. Many times a day, you're going to have to be persistent in your prayers. Reminding yourself that the truths that are that you need to live by and the truths you ought to be thinking about. And if you fail, you get up and you start going again. A just man falleth seven times and rises up again. I'm going to fall, then get back up and start out again and remind yourself again of the truths of God's Word and the truths that will give you victory. See, the, the, the difficulty is, is when things don't look good, and the devil's good at that, making things look bad, and want us to just say, what's the use? Acts 16, Paul and Silas have been to Philippi. They have cast out a demon from a young girl. And of course, the men who were using her to make money were very upset. And they end up have having Paul and Silas arrested. Not just arrested, but beaten. And then thrown into prison in stocks. Now, you look at that. First of all, why were they in Philippi in the first place? The vision? Come help us. 
Hey, here we go. Can't get any clearer than that. Let's go. And they go there and they see, hey, they cast a demon out. Things are looking good and all of a sudden we're arrested, we're beaten, we're thrown in stocks and it's midnight. What are we going to do now? You know what they did? You know what they did? They sang, they, they prayed and sang praises to God. We would have we griped and complained to God. I don't deserve this. Come on, we did the right thing. We cast out that evil spirit. And this is what we get? Boy, it really paid to serve God. You understand? It didn't, it looked like Satan had won. And they were refusing to acknowledge that he won. See, Satan knew, and Satan knows he's defeated. But he doesn't want to admit that defeat to you or me. But we have to continually remind him of it. That he is not won, and he's not going to win, and he has been beaten, and he will be beaten, and God wins the victory. And so they prayed, and they sang. They didn't feel sorry for themselves. They didn't complain, oh, well, the devil's just winning. I just can't do very much. I don't know why I'm in this predicament. Despite what it looked like outwardly, they insisted on victory. That God was going to get the victory and God was going to get the glory. And as they prayed and they sang, and by the way, the prisoners heard them. Whether you're rejoicing and you're continuing to pray and sing praises to God, when everything looks like it's against you, other people are watching you. You're going to influence them for good or for bad. They're watching. Well, about midnight, something began to shake, didn't it? Yeah. You know, the earthquake came. Everybody's bands fell off. But none of those prisoners left. God had a jailer he wanted to get saved, didn't he? And the jailer came in and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, hey, the prisoners didn't just hear him. The jailer heard him too. And he knew what was going on. And that night, jailer got saved, and Mrs. Jailer got saved, and all the little jailers got saved, and they got baptized, and they had a rejoicing time. And by the way, the next day, if you read about it, the, the people, the, the, the leaders of the town had to apologize to them. See? Who won? God won. Who got the victory? God got the victory. Why? Because somebody said, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to be persistent, even though it looks like the devil won. He's not going to win. And he won't win if you'll stay persistent. And you'll stay persistent in prayer. Truth will win. Persistence in prayer says truth must win. And it will. The preeminence of prayer, the passion of prayer, the paraclete of prayer, the protection of prayer, the perseverance of prayer, and lastly, the people of prayer. The people of prayer. Notice what it says. We're watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All saints. Can I say your first responsibility is to pray for yourself. If you... You can preach to others, but if you become a castaway, you're done. So you have to, yeah, your responsibility is to pray for yourself, then pray for your family, then pray for your church family, then pray for your missionaries around the world, and then pray for all believers. Pray for all believers. Isn't that amazing? Our prayer is to embrace the whole world. How, how, how tunnel vision do we get in our prayers? God said you shouldn't be tunnel vision. Pray for the world. Pray for all believers, all saints. Let me give you several things. This is not on your paper. This is, this is extra. Maybe you have room to write down below. Why we should pray for all saints. Number one, because they're our brethren. Oh, they may have a different skin color or speak a different language or, or have a different kind of name, but you know what? They're our brethren. Their faith is in Jesus Christ. They're our brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. 
We pray for them because, number two, like us, they have hearts that are prone to evil. And they too need the grace of God. Number three, because nothing tends to make us love others as praying for others. You want to? You have a fault with somebody? You have somebody you just say, I just don't care for them? Why don't you put, them on, put, put their name down and pray for them daily? Well, I tell you, it'll change. Help you overlook the faults and begin to pray for them. Number four, because the condition of the church is always such that it always needs the grace of God. Christians backslide, some get cold or lukewarm, some go into error, some get conformed to the world. But we should pray for one another. Because you should pray for all saints because some Christian may be facing a temptation at that very time you're praying. They may be facing something that, a trial not, not even known to you. Sometimes you may not find out till later and someone will tell you something and, and you'll know, I was praying for them. I remember praying for them on that day. God will help you. We pray for all saints because every day and every night many Christians die around the world. There are Christians being martyred around the world. We don't hear much about it in America. There are certain uh, voice of the martyrs and other places you can go to where you can, you can find out what persecution and martyrdom is being done around the world. And so we need to pray for other believers. And number seven, we also pray for everyone, other believers because we also will die one day. We also, listen, it's a great comfort to pray for others, but it's a great comfort to know that others are praying for you. You have, you have no idea what and, and you, you, just, you just don't have any idea until you go through difficulties or you go through trouble and you go through a trial and you feel the strengthening hand of God because of the prayers of God's people. It really makes a difference. And, and you can tell that. And so pray for all saints. Now it's interesting. Paul said in verse 19, would you look there? Paul said, and for me. He says, you're praying for all saints. Don't leave me out. Paul said, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I, Paul said, I want you to pray for me that, that I'll have a greater ability to communicate the gospel. That's a great prayer for a missionary, is it not? I'll have great, great ability to communicate the word of God to others. That I'll have the ability to speak boldly. In the name of Christ. It's one thing to, to be here in our country and to speak boldly for Christ. It's another thing to go to another country and speak boldly for Christ. When that is not necessarily welcome in their country or received in their country. You need people to be praying for you. Paul said, I can speak more boldly if I know you're praying. It's much like Esther when she was told to go into the king. Mordecai said, you've got to go tell the king about this. Remember what she asked him? You all fast and pray for me. And then she got the boldness to go in and say something before the king. Boldness. You can change, you can change the world through prayer. They're getting excited down there, aren't they? <laughs> you can change the world through prayer. Oh, I'll never, I'll never be able to go to Uganda. I'll never be able to go to the Congo. I'll never be able to go to Armenia or Kazakhstan or, or China or around the world. No, but you can go to any of those places from your prayer closet. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. You can change the world through prayer. Someone says, well, I guess we can pray. Really? Now, see, we relegate that to such a minor, minor position. The invincible power of prayer knows no bounds. 
That's the allness of prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let's stand together, shall we? We'll have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful admonition and this all-encompassing prayer. God, forgive us for how little we pray. How often the importance and the emphasis is not on prayer. May we take this truth tonight. May you drive it deep in our heart. May we realize that prayer doesn't change things, but prayer goes to God, and God changes things. Thou that hearest prayer, thank you for always being on the receiving end of our prayers, always bending your ear to listen. Lord, I pray that each of us would make prayer priority would realize how vital it is in our Christian walk and to walk in victory for our protection for our power for our passion for our protection so so much is at stake how can we not pray so father help us to leave this place different than when we came in tonight. And may tomorrow and even tonight before we go to bed start a new era in our lives. That's an era of prayer. May we see you work in miraculous and wonderful ways in each of our lives. We love you. We thank you again for the Word of God and for its help in our lives. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord, and make us mindful you go with us from this place. And May we please you in all we do. We love you. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. I did get a note here just before I got up. This is from Brenda Mann. Where's Brenda? Is she there? Everybody see where Brenda is? Now, don't hurt anybody, okay? Brenda says she has homemade fudge for everybody. Peanut butter and peanut butter chocolate. Now, do you have papers? Take a number or anything? Wanna, don't hurt her, but if you want to get some fudge, you see Brenda, okay? All right? And uh, that's a good deal, okay? Let's sing together. Got it? Uh, Brother Bowman? Yes. Any update on that? Okay, that's a little baby, isn't it? Okay, good. All right, ready, Lisa? Got it? I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You're dismissed. Choir, come right on up. <laughs>